Welcome back everyone. Thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial on the painting process of painting these two beautiful Maine Coon cats. So we're going to do the background in a beautiful sage green color which turns out to be the perfect color for the owner of these two cats. My sister and I had sort of talked about what colors would be best and we agreed that this is a great color. She thought it would match her friend's house and I thought it was the perfect complementary color for the cat's eyes. So it worked out really great because she said it was the perfect color when she received the portrait. So enjoy watching this tutorial. I hope you learn a little something about how to paint these beautiful cats. Let's get painting. So every once in a while I go down and pick up a little bit of parchment and mix it in with the sage green and just sort of splash that around so it just is like a little um, blurry effect there behind the animals. So just go all around your rough sketch there and now I'm taking that sage green color and I'm just going around the eyes, um, you know the entire eyeball and this cat behind is just showing half the eye there, He's, it's poking out from behind the front cat's um, ear <laughs> and I've also taken a little bit of that parchment color and added it to the eye color as well. And now I'm taking a little burnt umber and going in the pupil area and um, you know the pupils are situated differently on all eyes because of the uh, you know the direction they're looking in. Um, I also added a tad of Mars Black to that just to darken it up a little bit and then I used the Mars Black um, mixed with the burnt umber a little darker around the entire eyes of its um, gorgeous eyes that they have so I go all the way around there's like a thick band of fur that is dark all around these eyes and they just it really stands out amazingly well you see the picture there of the cat my inspiration shot So I like putting the eyes in as one of the first features painted on this painting because then we're not just looking at a big black hole or you know just emptiness there. You can see the eyes and and uh, as you're painting all the fur around it and everything it just looks so much better than waiting until the end to put the eyes in. This portrait um, tutorial is going to have to be divided up into two parts, I do believe at this point. Um, if I do have to 
do a part one and part two. I hope that you will come back and join me for the finish um, product in part two. And I appreciate you doing that. And I also appreciate you watching this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do and hit the bell for upcoming notifications and leave me a comment below. Let me know where you're from, what kind of pets you have, if you're interested in painting animals, um, you know, why you've come here to watch this tutorial. Maybe you have a Maine Coon. Um, I'm just in love with these animals. Anyway, I'd love to hear from you. I hope you're enjoying this tutorial. So let me introduce you to these cats. The cat here that I'm working on that's sitting in the back he looks a bit more masculine, and when I first looked at the picture, I thought it was he was a male and the front one was a female, but they're actually both males. This one in the back, his name is Phil. The one in the front, his name is Tofi, T-O-F-I. They're beautiful Maine Coons, and sadly, they both have passed away. Um, this is a portrait uh, that my sister is having made for a friend of hers that lost her two cats. They lived a good long life. Um, I, I'm not sure of how many years. Both cats were over 21 pounds. Their main coons, I, I told you before. And these cats are just huge, uh, absolutely gorgeous cats. Uh, been reading up on them learned a lot, a, lot, a lot about them and I'm kind of falling in love with them. <laughs> they have a very dog-like personality. They're not as aloof as most cats. At least that is what I've read. Add a tiny bit of cad yellow to your parchment color and bring that all around the sides of the eyes where it is lighter. So here is my finished painting I'm showing you here. And as I'm putting in this section of fur on Phil's back, I'm using burnt umber, a little bit of parchment, and from time to time I add into the burnt umber some Mars black. So this cat sort of had like almost like a money cat back, and um, so it had like the three colors, the light, the dark, and the medium color tones in that section of fur, which also matched the sections of fur that uh, you see around their nose and eyes and pretty much besides a little bit on Phil's paw and a tiny bit on Tophie's body it's basically white fur on the bottom section of the cats except for his back here from what I can see in my inspiration shot. So in putting all these colors around the eyes and up around the ears and all that, it's the same color combination that I just told you for that section of back fur. And um, you'll just want to look at your painting and put in the dark values where they belong and the medium values and then um, you can just go from there adding details on top of that. Right now I'm just putting in the burnt umber, but then I come back in with a mix of burnt umber and Mars Black for this top section of Tofi's head. So now I'm going to go ahead and put in the underpainting for the white fur all along the bottom of both of the cats and down the paws. Um, what I've done is I've added into the titanium white a little bit of phthalo blue. Um, you never want to just use straight white. It doesn't show up as white. Um, so you have to have the, the blue in there just to kind of help it to stand out. Or if it, you know, in some cases it's more of a blonde color, you'd want to add some 
uh, maybe some yellow ochre, which I do actually do later. So it's not gonna be as blue as it looks right now, but I wanna get that underpainting done, and then we will add the, um, the softer, more yellow tones over the top of this. But right now we're putting an underpainting of white with a little bit of phthalo blue. So if you look up here at the final painting, you can see that it definitely doesn't look like blue paint there on the painting. So after the details are all put in, you'll see that this blue underpainting just uh, gives us a basis for the white fur to look like white fluffy fur. So here I'm just adding a bit more of the sage green to show the differentiation of where Phil's body ends and Topi's body sort of fluffs over parts of his body there and then where the paw starts there. So um, that was necessary to put that in. And as I'm putting this light blue underpainting, it looks like both cat's fur just blends together. But if you look at my finished product there, you'll see that after we put in the shadows and the details in the fur, you'll actually see where Topi's body is sitting out in front of Phil's. And um, it doesn't just look like one section of fur. <laughs> you'll see the differentiation of the two cats. And again, as you can see, the face also is white of Tofi, and then the body. And so the shadow makes all the difference in the world. Um, after we get those shadows in, you'll be able to see where the face stands out in front of the body. So at this point, I just continue to put in this com color combination of blue and white, titanium white and phthalo blue, and all the areas of the uh, canvas that are going to be the white fluffy fur. I'll have all that colored in.
So now we'll go ahead and put in the details of the ears and the fur around the face. And I'm using Burnt Umber on a one quarter inch angle brush. And later on, when I add some of the details onto these um, darker and lighter values that I'm putting here on the facial hairs, I do add some yellow ochre and a little raw sienna in different areas. And as I'm doing that, I'll, I'll let you know when I'm adding those colors in there. And just to repeat, I am adding a bit of Mars Black into the Burnt Umber around the eyes and some of those hairs around the eyes. So when you see the darker go in, that's what I've actually done. I've just added the Mars Black to the Burnt Umber. So basically we're still just putting in the underpainting for for this portrait. Um, you know, we've put the white in, we've put a lot of the different brown areas in um, using all those underpainting colors that I've talked to you about and the underpainting for the eyes. So basically we're just continuing to get the underpainting put in here and then we'll start on the details. So this part of it you have to have a lot of patience and um, you know getting those values in the right places and not being able to put in all the fun details quite yet so sometimes when I'm going through the painting process I get to a certain point and I, not at this point yet because we're just putting the underpainting in, but certain steps can start to feel a bit redundant and it can get a little bit um, discouraging, but you don't want to allow yourself to be discouraged. You want to just hang in there, uh, go through all the layers and all the steps that are going to finally get you to the point. You'll even have to go through an ugly stage and you'll finally get to the point where it all starts to uh, come together when you start pulling in all those little details. So yeah, never get discouraged, keep on going. And if you ever need to take a break, take a break and come back to it. And I think that always helps. So now we're putting in the little nose um, and I'm using a crimson red and a little bit of Mars Black, tiny bit of Titanium White. The shape of this nose is like a little triangle upside down with a point on the bottom of course 
and it has just a, on the top part just a little tiny bit of an indent at the center and then if you look very close here at my um, up close shot of the finished product you see that I used a bit of shadow above the little triangle to indicate the top part of the nose. And the top part of that triangle on the this, on this edges is rounded downward. So look closely at the nose that you're painting and just sort of follow along exactly the way that it appears to you to be. So rounded on those edges, a little bit of a dip in the middle, and then coming down to a point. So here using Burnt Umber and Mars Black, we'll make the mouth. So we used the Mars Black and the Burnt Umber there on the top part of the mouth and now we're just using Burnt Umber with a little bit of Titanium White for the underpainting of the bottom part of the mouth. And you can always refer to the finished painting there on the side to help you if you are painting along with me. So now what I'm doing is I'm creating a bit of an underpainting for the shadow underneath the round part of the face here. Um, if you look at the finished product there, you'll see that, of course, that gets faded down into the white fur a little bit later on, but this will help that face to stand out for now. And then we'll be putting lighter tones over the top of that. And what I'm using here is just some uh, burnt umber. Burnt umber mixed with a little titanium white. Continuing to get the underpainting done. Once this underpainting is all on, then we can move on to the details. And here for this portion of the underpainting of the ear, I'm using uh, raw sienna and a little bit of titanium white. And here on this side of the face, I am using a tiny bit of Mars Black and Titanium White and some Thalo Blue to put the shadow in there where the face is sticking out for, you know, the shadow for where the face is higher than the rest of the body, of course. This is the part of the painting I was talking about earlier that gets to be kind of like the ugly part. <laughs> and it goes through like transformation, you know, with little bits of shadow here and there and a bit more of the underpainting. And I kind of stop and do a little details before I move on to the rest of the underpainting. But um, this part gets a little uh, frustrating sometimes. Um, because it looks so ugly but I find that almost every painting goes through an ugly stage so hang in there don't get discouraged keep at it
So here I'm using a little bit of that gray mixture with the titanium white, phthalo blue, and the Mars black. So like a bluish uh, gray. And I'm adding some detail into the fur. And here I'm making a difference between um, these, both of these cats, Phil and Tofi. And by bringing in this gray color, that's what's going to help Tofi in the front to stand out. And uh, Phil's fur is shadowed and in the background. Can you see as I'm adding that in, that grayish color, um, the definition in the white fluffy fur starting to show up? And now with some of the uh, burnt umber and titanium white, I am adding that little tiny bit of brown that shows up there on um, Phil's paw and then also on the bottom part of his paw. I'm pulling a bit of the brown down into where his face is. And now I've added a little bit of Mars Black to my burnt umber and I'm just adding some definition on this back fur. I'm using raw sienna and a little bit of titanium white. I'm picking up a little bit of burnt umber and bringing it along the edges here. back to using the raw sienna and titanium white and then when I when you see me pulling in the darker I'm just adding the um, burnt umber and it, when it gets very very dark in areas I'm adding some Mars black to the burnt umber I love the markings on Phil's face, both of them really, but his is so distinct and so strong looking. His nose has so much character to it. If I remember correctly, my sister said that they weigh 21 pounds each. I'll check that out and if I'm wrong, I'll put it in the description below. So here I'm using the raw sienna and titanium white again um, to pull in some shadows under his face and then here around um, 
his fur and again to show more definition between the two cats. I was reading about how Maine Coons are really playful and they stay sort of playful and curious their whole lives and they're not aloof like a lot of cats are. They more have they have more like a dog-like personality. Doesn't that sound really intriguing? Now with this layer, um, as you know from watching some of my other pet portraits, there's many different layers that go into creating a pet portrait and to have the fur look real and fluffy and all that. So here and now I'm starting to add some of that, that layer on top of the underpainting, so to speak, and bring in some of the definition in the different areas of the fur. So on the bottom part of the paw, you saw I put a little bit of the raw sienna lightened up, but that gives the paw that round look. And now I'm sort of um, blending out that shadow underneath Phil's face. So many layers go into this, but um, you have to be patient because it all matters really. And if you look over there to my finished product, you can see how it all ends up looking very, very nice. And here I'm blending out the shadow area of uh, Tofi's face. Now here I've added quite a bit of Mars Black to my burnt umber for these markings on the top of Tofi's head. I'm reading here on the internet, uh, it says that the Maine Coon is predominantly known for its size and dense coat of fur, which helps the large feline to survive the harsh climate of Maine, the state from which they originated. The Wikipedia says that the Maine Coon is a very social cat which could be the reason why the Maine Coon has a reputation of being referred to as the Gentle Giant. It's, um, like I said, known for its size and its dense coat. Um, so I'm quoting from the Wikipedia. So it says, due to the large size of the feline, professionals have noticed certain health problems. Oh, that's too bad. So they have hip dysplasia. Oh, I feel for him because I have hip dysplasia too. <laughs> oh, that's painful. Mm -hmm. 
actually, I don't actually have hip dysplasia. I just have a bad hip full of arthritis and uh, needs to be replaced. So here I'm working on getting these dark uh, markings in the proper place and I'm just using um, Mars Black and Burnt Umber here. Now I'm adding a little bit more of the Mars Black um, mixed with the Burnt Umber around the eyes just to really help them to stand out because in, per in the picture they really stood out very boldly with the dark, dark markings around the eyes. Now with the same color combination, I'm working on Phil's markings. These cats have so much character to their faces with all the beautiful markings and those gorgeous eyes.
as I'm painting these markings, it's, his face is reminding me of a tiger. This is a long handle 1 8 inch round brush. So as you're doing all these details, keep looking at your reference photo and, um, you know, just little by little add each of the details, all the dark values and the light values and all that, and it'll all start to come together. On this part of his nose, I've added a tiny bit of cad red into the burnt umber mixture and it just made just enough of a difference where the um, the fur in that area was a different color than the rest of the face. Please hit like if you're enjoying this tutorial. I really appreciate it. You can see now how it's really starting to come together and it's starting to look like um, a real cat or real cats. Most often when I'm working on pet portraits and I get to different stages of the pet portrait, like at this stage for instance, what I do is I stop my process, I take a picture of it, and then I take my inspiration picture and I go to a little um, app called uh, Pic Collage and I put the two together. I put the inspiration photo and where I'm at now together and then I, I make that collage and then I study that and I see what needs to be tweaked. If maybe the eyes are too far apart or they're not big enough or the ears need to be um, repositioned or made smaller, made larger, all those little points by looking at the inspiration shot right next to where you're at now, you can really make any improvements or tweaks that need to be done. And then I do that again later on as I get towards the end of the portrait. It's very helpful.
And I find that using the long handle brushes and sitting back from your painting as you're putting in all the details is so much better than when you're sitting right up on the painting using a short handled brush because if you've been painting for a while you know how important it is to step back from your painting and look at it from afar. Um, that really tells the story. So when you're painting and you're using a long handle paintbrush, you are looking at it from afar as you're painting. And that's extremely helpful little tip as well. So please join me for part two of this um, pet portrait. I definitely won't be able to put this all in one. And um, so I do appreciate that you watched this all the way to the end and that you'll come back and watch part two. Um, I hope you're learning something as you're painting along with me or just watching it. Um, and I would love to hear from you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I find your question and as um, soon as I'm possibly able to get back to you. But I would appreciate it if you let me know what you think about the painting. Uh, also, I'm interested to know if you like my choice of music. A friend of mine made this piece for me to use in my tutorials and I really like it. So I would like your opinion if you would like me if you like how I play it throughout the whole entire portrait, or should I switch it up a little bit, maybe add a little piece of, another piece of music in there as well, just to kind of um, break it up, or do you like it the way that I do it now? So let me know these things, I appreciate it. And um, subscribe to my channel, and hit like if you would. Also share this on social media, and um, help me grow my channel if you would. I really, really appreciate that. So here I'm going to work on brightening up these eyes a bit and I've taken a bit of cad yellow and titanium white, um, just sort of bringing some of those brighter light colors all around the eyeball. My dog is shaking her collar if you heard that. I'm taking the light color, it's basically like a wash that I'd made. So I'm just going right over the pupil there and then I'm going to come back in with some Mars Black and redefine the pupil. Um, adjust it just a little bit. So I'm making it very light around the outer edges of the eyes with the um, cad yellow and titanium white. So now I've picked up a little bit of the Mars Black very, very lightly on my brush and I'm just 
redefining the uh, pupils of the eyes. I'm making them a tad skinnier than I had them before. I really enjoy painting these eyes because they are such pretty eyes um, and on Phil in the back there too their eyes are just so beautiful that green yellowish green color I love it it's so pretty and the way the fur is shaped around the eyes these are just beautiful cats So now I'm going back to uh, the details around the eyes and in the face. Um, what I did here is I took a little bit of titanium white and the thalo blue, just the tiniest little bit of thalo blue, and just sort of redefined that bright area of the fur around the eyes. And I am using a small detail brush. So here again, the color combination that I'm using for these darker areas is the Burnt Umber mixed with a little bit of Mars Black. And this is another good point where you could stop and, and go to the Pic Collage app and put the photo of the, um, the reference photo and the photo of where you're at right now and compare. And then just um, you know make sure that everything is proportioned right So you can use your paintbrush there to kind of hold it straight and make sure that the nose is lined up and the eyes are lined up. So that's what I just did there. It, it always helps just to kind of make sure everything's lining up properly as you go along. And here I'm just bringing in a little bit of titanium white with a tiny bit of um, raw sienna mixed in just so it's like a yellowish white a blondish white and i'm just kind of pulling some definition i don't know if the white is showing up really good on the tv hopefully let me know but um i'm looking at it as i'm editing looking at it on just my phone so i'm hoping that it'll come across clearer on the tv um, but i'm just pulling in some definition over the fur making that fluffy white fur So don't forget to subscribe and turn your bell on for the upcoming part two to this uh, portrait and for other notifications of upcoming tutorials. I hope you'll join me for part two and let me know what you thought about this one here. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you've come all the way to this point, I really do appreciate that. And I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope you learned some tips and tricks along the way so please let me know and let me know what you're painting and if you have any questions just leave them in the comments below thanks so much for watching so here I'm gonna go over this hard line that I have there that shows where the the paw is and the leg 
and just we don't want any hard lines so you're just going to take your lighter color and just sort of put some fluffy hairs over that line and have the fur turn in the direction of the paw Her, his little paw was actually turned under like he was he had it bent and he was leaning on it like that but the photo was cropped to where you actually don't see the bend until you flip the portrait up and then you do see it painted underneath on the uh, on the side of the portrait so here I'm making sure that everything lines up properly and if not I just do a little tweak in there and I'm just using the um, titanium white with a tiny little bit of uh, raw sienna in here to go over these uh, darker gray uh, furs that I have in there. And you see how we started out with a blue underpainting, but you don't see that as blue anymore, do you? It's just now looking like fluffy fur. So here we're going to work on the ears a little bit. So now we start to get into all the very important little details, um, the layers on top of the underpainting, and it really is layers on top of layers um, when you're doing a, a portrait. So here we're just taking the uh, burnt umber and just going around the edges and also splashing in some darker values in the ears before we actually put the little uh, furs, the little hairs in the ear um, that'll go over all of the different colors that we put on the inside of the ears. So now we're going to start working on the details of this little nose and the colors I'm using are crimson red and titanium white for the very center of the nose and around the edges I've got the crimson red mixed with uh, Mars black and it's a very adorable little nose and then we'll put the details in the mouth too so just follow along as you look at your reference photo and just paint the nose as you see it appearing on the reference photo and um, the little nostrils are over on the side of the cat's nose and the top part of the nose is rounded and I'm going to eventually be taking in a little bit of the uh, gray the bluish gray and putting that on the top of the nose to give that little bit of a um, dimensional look So here I've taken the Mars black and um, the burnt umber, mostly the black, and I'm going underneath the, uh, the little chubby cheek area. And then on the bottom part of the lip where the, fur, the hairs are, I'm just putting in the, um, tight, I'm sorry, burnt umber, and just pulling that along the bottom section of the mouth.
So with the medium gray, uh, I just used Mars Black, Titanium White, and a tiny little bit of the Thalo Blue. That's my gray. And I'm just bringing in some definition on the top of the nose. You see how that created some dimension? And now we're going to work on Phil's nose and mouth. So with a very fine detail brush, I'm using Burnt Umber and uh, Mars Black. And his little crease goes to the side because of the way his face is cocked. So add just a bit more of the Mars Black for when you do the nostrils on the side of his nose and the crease coming down to his mouth. He has such beautiful features, this cat. They both do, really, but I, I just think his are so masculine and just like a tiger, just really beautiful. They're both beautiful cats. So while I have that dark mixture on my brush, my detail brush, I'm going up to accent some of the dark um, features of his face around his nose where it gets really, really dark. And on um, both sides of the eyes, it, it was very dark. And again, this is just the Mars Black and the uh, Titanium. I'm so sorry, the Mars Black and the burnt umber mixed together. And for this part of his nose, I'm not sure if I mentioned it before, but I added a little bit of cad red to the burnt umber mixture, and it just made it uh, a bit more on the reddish side, but still a rich brown.
that's it for this portion of the painting. We'll see you in part two. Thank you so much for watching. Stay healthy, stay happy, and stay tuned. Bye-bye.